Okay, now we're going to be looking at rotation, okay? New topic, but there's no new notes, right? We are still going to sum the forces in X equals MAX. We're still going to sum the forces in Y equals MAY. We're still going to sum the moments. If we sum the moments about G, it's IG alpha. If we sum the moments about a fixed point, I about that fixed point. If we sum the moments <coughs> about any other point, it would be IG alpha plus MAD. So one, two, uh, and then one out of these three uh, moment options. <clears throat> now, I've got to be more careful. This acceleration, you know, hey, point G might have a different acceleration than point O, than point P, for instance. Uh, this needs to be the acceleration of point G, the acceleration of point G right here. So just make sure that's the acceleration of point G. But otherwise, free body diagram, sum the forces equals MA, sum the force equals MA, sum the moments equals I alpha. All right, let's look at this one. <clears throat> a 20 kilogram slender rod has an angular velocity of five radians per second. Determine the angular acceleration and the horizontal vertical components of the reaction of the pin of the rod at this instant. All right, so um, I'm going to <clears throat> draw my free body diagram. Some of the forces in, we'll call it Y for just a second and some of the force in the x direction. Uh, I, it's, it's told me the weight, so let me put the weight down there on my figure. I've got this moment, this moment drawn on here, 60 Newton meters. Let me draw that on there right here. Now this five radians per second, that's not a force, that's not a moment, <clears throat> that's not really, we're not gonna sum that. That's just some information about the motion. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Now, for these rotation problems, <clears throat> point G, let's think about point G. <clears throat> what is point G doing? Point G is going in a circular path. What do we have to be careful about things that are going in a circular path? Normal and tangential acceleration. So let me, instead of summing the forces in X and Y, which we really kind of will be, <clears throat> we might want to sum our forces normal because the acceleration of G is in the normal direction and sum our forces tangential <clears throat> because the acceleration of G is in the tangential direction. Remember, <clears throat> back in the day, I, I like to define my axes. I told you, you know, in class, I like to define my axes according to the acceleration. And so here, if G is accelerating in normal tangential acceleration, let's define our axes according to point G's normal and tangential acceleration. So point G, <clears throat> normal, is going to be into the curve, and tangential, I think, will be right there. And so those are my axes. Let me draw those. Those are kind of global down is tangential, <clears throat> left is normal. All right, so define your axis according to the acceleration, and if point G is in a circular path, define your axis normal tangential. So let us, <clears throat> so I lied, we're not going to sum our forces in X, we're going to sum our forces in normal, and sum our forces in tangential. <clears throat> okay, so summing the forces in the normal direction. Here's the normal direction, is to the left. I've got negative OX because I drew OX to the right. Maybe I should have just gone ahead and, and drawn O to the left, thinking ahead, but I didn't. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. So summing the forces in the normal direction equals mass times A normal. What is A normal? V squared over R or <clears throat> R omega squared, right? Let me back up here. Sum of the forces in normal equals mass times A normal. Don't forget that mass right there. And A normal is V squared over R or R omega squared. R many times is the radius, but technically R is the distance your point is. Distance point G is away from the center of rotation. And here, where is it rotating about? Where's the center of rotation? Center of rotation is O, point O. <clears throat> so this is going to be, don't forget my mass, 
A normal is R 1.5. R is 1.5 because that's how far point G is away from the center of rotation O times omega squared. So that 5 didn't matter, positive or negative, it's the magnitude squared. <clears throat> there we go. And so this equation right here, <clears throat> that only has one unknown, so let me just go ahead and solve. OX negative 750. <clears throat> what did that negative mean? Just means I guessed the wrong direction. So OX, the force right here at this pin is 750 newtons to the left. <clears throat> that was one of the things that it's asking for. That would be the horizontal com component of the reaction at this pin. <clears throat> All right, now let me sum my forces in the, oops, sorry, sum my forces in the tangential direction. What am I calling tangential direction? I could either go up or down. <clears throat> Generally, tangential, right, would be the direction that it is moving. <clears throat> and so if this is spinning clockwise, this is moving down. So down is tangential. So I drew OY up, so that's going to be negative OY. The weight, 20 times 9.81. Is that it? I think that's it. Those are the only forces I have in the y direction. Equals M A, sorry, M A tangential. M A tangential. What is A tangential? R alpha. Right? R again is... <clears throat> R, again, is the distance that point G is away from the center of rotation. So this would be 20 times 1.5 times alpha of the beam. That's what I'm trying to find, the alpha of the beam. Okay, now, do you see what I just did, though? <clears throat> I said that A tangential was in the tangential direction. I just said A tangential was down. Because I just said A tangential was down, I'm saying that alpha would, would be that way leading to A tangential, right? I just defined alpha that way. So I just defined alpha as clockwise. And that's fine. <clears throat> the first time you define something, you can define it whatever direction you want. All right. But in my next equation, I'm about to use alpha again. And so anytime you use a variable again, make sure that it agrees with any of the other times you've used it previously. So because I define tangential as down, and I just said this is positive right here, I'm defining alpha as clockwise. So when I'm about to come over here and sum the moments... I'm about to come over here and sum the moments. We'll talk about it equals I alpha. Uh, I've defined alpha as clockwise, so that's why I'm about to sum the moments positive clockwise. Even though I usually don't do it. I'm summing the moments positive clockwise because I'm about to reuse I alpha, and I've already defined alpha as clockwise. I've already defined alpha as clockwise. Okay, but I have a I have a a, <clears throat> a um, dilemma here. Should I sum the moments about G? Should I sum the moments about point O? Should I, should I sum the moments about point P? Uh, well, in general, I usually like to sum the moments about G. But remember that if we sum the moments about a fixed point, there's still I don't still don't have to worry about an MAD term. If I sum the moments about a fixed point, and some of the moments about that fixed point, you know, the OX and OY go to zero. They, those don't show up in my moment equation. I think I'm going to sum the moments about the end of my rod because in the back of your book, maybe take a look at the back of the book, uh, for a slender rod, and this will be on your formula sheet, I about G of a slender rod is 1 12th ML squared. And I about the end, so this is what I'm going to use right here. I about the end of a slender rod, this I about the end of a slender rod is one third ML squared. So the book gives me the equation for I about the end, and I don't have to worry about MAD. I'm going to sum the moments about fixed point 
Um, O. All right, so some of the ones about O. OX goes straight through it. OY goes straight through it. I would need to have this 60 Newton meters no matter where, I, if I saw most about O, G, or P, I've got that clockwise 60 Newton meters. I'm summing positive clockwise. All right, the weight, 20 times 9.81, acting a moment arm of 1.5. <clears throat> that would also be clockwise positive. That's it. That, that's the only moments about O. Equals I about O alpha. And I about O is one third M, the total length three squared times alpha. And this equation only has one unknown. My alpha would be 5.9 radians per second squared. Came out positive. <clears throat> and positive I've defined as clockwise. And then I could plug that back in up there to get OT is 19.05 Newtons. So, sorry, OY. <clears throat> OY, 19.05 Newtons. Okay, so we answered the question, right? How do we do it? We drew a free body diagram. We sum the forces normal equals ma normal. Sum the forces tangential equals ma tangential. <laughs> then sum the moments equals i alpha. Sum the moments equals i alpha. Now, uh, do the math real quick on this. I could have sum the moments about g. Let's think about that. What if I had sum the moments about g? <clears throat> uh, I guess this ox still goes straight through g, but the oy has a moment arm of 1.5, creating a clockwise positive moment, the way that I drew it. The weight goes straight through it, so don't have to worry about the weight right here. Um, <clears throat> I still have that 60. And so that's, if I sum up about G, this would equal 112 IG alpha. See if that comes out to the, oh, sorry, I forgot that alpha. Right there. And, and do you see how this one, the math would be a little bit harder because I, this one I have two unknowns. I'd have to kind of combine it with that equation. Two equations, two unknowns. Wouldn't be too terrible to solve. But by summing the moments about point O, I eliminated that OY. And so it was only one equation, one unknown. You would still get, you should still get. You could double check your work if you got any time. 5.9 radians per second squared. And 19.05. Newtons. Okay? Alright. <clears throat>